earlier today, Dana White and the UFC made a massive announcement announcing UFC 291, and they also announced Paulo Costa versus Ikram Aliskarov. And this has got quite a few people talking. A lot of people are very confused by the matchup. And I'm here today to tell you why this is smart matchmaking and why they've made the matchup. And there's so many different reasons, but I genuinely do believe the main reason is they're trying to build contenders that Israel Adesanya hasn't fought yet. If you look at the rankings right now, I do understand Alex Paheya is now at 205. But if you do look at the rankings, Adesanya's fought Paheya, he's fought Whitaker, he's fought Vittori, he's fought Cannonier, he's fought Costa, he hasn't fought Duplessis and Strickland, but he has fought Derek Brunson, and he has fought Calvin Gastelum as well. Um, Israel Adesanya has already cleared out the division, he's already fought so many guys at the top of the division, to now at this point, they're going to be needing fighters to... Um, to be, to be fighting him, that's going to be a fresh matchup. Nobody wants to see Israel Adesanya versus Jared Cannonier too. It's just not a fight we want. And I feel like at the same time, Paulo Costa versus Israel Adesanya too would be fun. The build-up would be fun. But do I think the result would be much different? Honestly, not really. And I feel like Paulo Costa probably wanted a fight soon. You know, when there was the talks with Kamzat Chimaev, Paulo Costa versus Kamzat Chimaev, they were thinking about doing Paulo Costa versus Kamzat Chimaev in October. I think Paulo Costa's turned around and said, no, I want to fight sooner. And the UFC has just said, oh, well, um, how about you take on Ikram Aliskarov? He just got a massive win in his debut, and we're trying to shake up the division a little bit. And um, Paulo Costa just said, yeah, well, I've been training for Kamzat Chimaev the whole time, and it is actually a pretty similar matchup. And then on top of that, this is actually a really kind of smart like matchmaking, if they even thought about this part as well. If Ikram Aliskarov beats Paulo Costa, there's actually a very good chance he might actually rematch Kamzat Chimaev for a title shot. But even then, if Paulo Costa beats Ikram Aliskarov, then that does make the Kamzat Chimaev fight in October potentially much more interesting, right? It does make it much more interesting because we just saw Paulo Costa take on Ikram Aliskarov, who does have a kind of similar sort of style to Kamzat Chimaev in a way. Now, obviously, you can draw the comparison to Aliskarov and Chimaev because they have fought together in the past. And even then, Aliskarov is a very intriguing matchup for Israel Adesanya. If he does manage to beat Paulo Costa and then someone else, maybe he beats Paulo Costa and then he beats someone like Jared Cannonier, maybe Drikas Duplessis, maybe he beats, like, I don't know, Sean Strickland, Abus Magomedov if Abus beats Strickland. But if Aliskarov does win and he does actually earn a title shot eventually, it becomes a very interesting matchup against Israel Adesanya because Israel Adesanya throughout his entire career has never had to deal with a, a Sambo guy. And if you do look into Ikram Aliskarov on his Wikipedia, which is, uh, I mean, I think Wikipedia is actually a pretty good source for a lot of MMA content because they do cover it very, very well, whoever does fill it in. But if you do kind of look here, I'm going to try my best to not cover it up with my face. Um, you can see in 2016, he was a world champion in Sambo. 2012, he was a champion in Sambo, who even won the World Cup in Sambo. He's a European champion in Sambo. So I do believe he's a two-time world uh, Sambo champion, but you could argue he's a four-time world Sambo champion, right? He's got four gold medalists at the world level. So technically, we've got a four-time world Sambo champion here in Ikram Aliskarov, and that's kind of how I would describe him, a four-time world champion. But... Do I think he beats Paulo Costa? And that's where this matchup gets very interesting because you kind of got to make a prediction, right? And I don't know. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm actually going to pick Paulo Costa in the matchup. I think Paulo Costa, the odds haven't dropped yet. They probably will drop soon because we already do have odds for Paheya versus Blakovic. If you wanted to know what the opening odds are, Blakovic is minus 125. Paheya is plus 105. But we're going to talk about this. I think Paulo Costa is going to be the favorite in the fight. I think he might open as the favorite and I think he's going to close as the favorite as well. Although Ikram, Ikram Liskarov knocked out Phil Horse before, in his first in his first fight in the first round it's not something that he does he doesn't really do that often he kind of is a wrestler and grappler and when he does get the fight to the ground his grappling is very good now paulo costa does have very good takedown defense and on top of that he does have a black belt in brazilian jiu-jitsu have we really seen it used not really i do believe it come from i believe his name is walid ishmael so um apparently walid ishmael just hands out black belts i don't know that's just kind of like a meme in the mma community but uh we've never really seen 
Costa uh, use his black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu but we do know that Costa's got grappling and we do know that Costa has probably been training for a Kamsa Chimaev matchup and the first thing that you want to do when you are training to fight someone like Kamsa Chimaev is drill that takedown defense and we know that Paulo Costa who already has pretty good takedown defense will have been drilling that takedown defense over and over again because he hasn't fought for eight months he probably was offered the Chimaev fight but not until October and Costa's just said no I don't want to fight in October, you know, I've got to pay my bills. Apparently as well, remember that Costa recently signed that massive deal where his girlfriend apparently did the negotiations for him and he's gone on about how he's going to be like the highest paid Brazilian ever in the UFC and the rumor is, and it has been confirmed by sources closer to the to the situation, that Costa's looking at about a million dollars per fight. He's probably on 500 plus 500 right now. Maybe like 400 plus 400, but Paulo Costa's on a new contract. He's on a new deal where he's getting paid big money. And Costa probably saw this fight as like, you're going to pay me this new contract money. Maybe it is like 300k, 400, 500k. You're going to pay me hundreds of thousands of dollars to fight an unranked guy. Like, sign me up, you know what I mean? And Costa, you know, as I said, he did just sign a new deal. So he probably did want him to fight as soon as he possibly could get one. And this is what the UFC come up with. And I think it's smart because for the UFC's point of view, if Ikram Aliskarov does win, all of a sudden you've got a title challenger at middleweight. But if Ikram Aliskarov does win as well, all of a sudden comes at Shemaya versus Ikram Aliskarov opens up because Ikram Aliskarov, as you guys may or may not know, when Kamzat Chimaev was on his dominant rise up the rankings, although he did lose in 2 minutes and 26 seconds, Ikram Aliskarov did give Kamzat Chimaev his toughest fight before he came into the UFC. Now, he did get KO'd in the first round, in under half a round, but he did defend all of Chimaev's takedowns, and nobody defended any of Chimaev's takedowns, I think, for a very long time. I think maybe Gilbert Burns might have been the first fighter in the UFC to defend a takedown. It does kind of tell you that Aliskarov at this point in 2019 was at a pretty high level and he's only going to be getting better. He's got a win over Dennis Tulin, who's now in the UFC as well. So, I don't know. The thing is with Ikram Aliskarov though, there's a lot of kind of questions though because he went to a decision with Narshan Burrell. I think Narshan Burrell is underrated and underappreciated as a fighter. At one point, Burrell was on a massive win streak and um, you could argue maybe if he beat Aliskarov, he could have gotten signed to the UFC again. Actually, little fun fact about Narshan Burrell, he was in the UFC in 2013. So that would have been crazy, you know, coming back after 10 years away. But um, I think I got very sidetracked there. But little, little, little side. There was a side quest in the main quest, here, right? So the pick is Costa for now. I don't really think my 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 opinion can change on this one. I I am not confident in it. I, I think it would be like a low confidence pick um, for those that are subscribed to the We Want Picks Premium. You understand the confidence ratings uh, pretty well. I do I do put those up on my predictions area of my premium section on the page, but. Um, Pula Costa, you know, I think it would be a low confidence pick because there's arguments. I even saw Lucas Tracy say that Pula Costa, he doesn't think that he's taking his career as seriously. I can agree to disagree. I feel like maybe now that Costa's on that big money, he's on the big, big bucks. He's on a massive contract. He's going to want to win. I don't know if there's a, there's a win bonus in there, but if there is a win bonus, he's going to want the win bonus as well to make them more money. And, um, yeah, Costa as well. It's also at Salt Lake City. Which is worth noting as well, it's going to be at high altitude, and Paulo Costa's experienced that before, his last fight was in Salt Lake City. And uh, maybe Paulo Costa would say, man, like that was really tough to fight, and maybe Paulo Costa, in the next few weeks, you might even see that he's going to move and train in Salt Lake City with his team for a couple of months to really get acclimated to the climate. Um, well, not really the climate, but the... The, I guess the climate, the, the environment of being at such high altitude. I don't think Akram Aliskarov will probably be doing that. So, yeah, there's so many little things in this fight. I do pick Costa, though, and it seems like a lot of people are picking Costa. I don't mind Akram's chances in this fight, though. I really don't. And I think it is smart matchmaking. It's good matchmaking. Adesanya's fought and beats literally everyone in the rankings. So, you're going to need a, a new contender. And if Akram Aliskarov beats Paulo Costa, he's going to be top five. And the UFC will probably do, I almost guarantee you, this Ikram Aliskarov, if he beats Paulo Costa, he'll be number five ranked in the middleweight division. And October Abu Dhabi card, UFC 294, what better fight to make than Ikram Aliskarov versus Kamzat Shemaev 2? 
have them rematch each other for a title shot in the UFC. That would be like one of the craziest storylines you could do, right? That's that's great. I think that's fantastic. I like what they're doing here. I knew that Ikram Moskov was going to work his way up the rankings very quickly. Did I think it was going to be this quickly? Absolutely not. When I said um, who I think Ikram Moskov should fight next, I think I mentioned like GM3. I was like, Ikram Moskov should fight GM3. But um, no, they're like, oh, well, he's Paulo Costa. And I don't mind it. I think it makes sense. I genuinely do. I've got Paulo Costa in the fight. I'm interested to hear what you guys think and let me know in the comments below. I think... Um, I think it's good matchmaking. I really do like the fight for all of the reasons that I brought up um, in this video. So let me know what you think, and I'll see you guys in the next one. If you made it this far in the video and you haven't left a like, please do leave a like. If you made it this far and you haven't subscribed, please leave a subscribe. And uh, leave a comment as well. I mean, I just think I just asked you guys to comment like two or three times in the last minute. But I'll see you guys in the next video. I'll probably break down... In the next video, maybe one of these two fights, but I'm not 100% sure. I've kind of got a lot of video ideas kind of in my, in my brain right now. So I've kind of got a lot of little ideas I can make videos on. But let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next one.